Hey everybody, welcome to a live number two show live from Hubbard Studios bathroom. I am Rafe Williams, the host of the number two show. Shout out to all you Rafe heads, you poopaholics, you crap heads, you, you shit bums, whatever. I haven't decided what we're going to call ourselves yet as we build a fan base, but we'll work on that. I'll try something new every week. I'm excited to be here this week. This is an exciting episode. Extremely exciting episode of the number two show because I have my first ever live episode co-host today we're going to be talking about all things wiccan and i brought on the only wiccan expert i could think of the lovely learn l well everybody hi rafe thanks for having me back on the number two show i love that it's live yes it's live it feels like let's look first live glory hole oh. first time i've ever looked at anyone live through the glory hole look at that we're <laughs> we hold, look, through the glory put your, hole put your hand through like you did earlier look at this <laughs> Here, get a close-up of this. This is amazing. This is the official handshake of the number two show. <laughs> yes. My fat hand won't even look at that. I know. Good luck. Oh, Those getting, rings are too oh, big. They can't go through the glory hole. You're only getting the tip. Sorry. Um, all right. Well, that'll start it awkwardly. I apologize for that to everyone out there in TV land. But goddamn, we look good. Uh, we just finished doing the Rizzuto show together. And now we're here doing the doo-doo show together and That's that right. feels good and we're going to be talking about today um all things there was an eclipse this week did you watch the eclipse i did i was on my deck and i watched it fully okay you watched it fully from your deck uh did anything how did you feel when you watched the eclipse did you feel moved did you feel like you were entering a new phase of life like how did it make you feel watching it i did feel well actually i had a headache and I know we talked about this on the show, but there were, you know, the eclipse sickness. I had a headache. I felt like all of a sudden just kind of a surge through my brain. And I was like, oh man, you know, I didn't think it was the eclipse. I thought it was like dehydration, but I had a little bit of that going on. And then, yeah, of course, I'm a very spiritual person. So I, of course, am looking at this as a new chapter. Yes, she's looking at it as a new chapter. Now, wait, is eclipse sickness a thing? Is that a real thing? Yeah. That's what people said. They were watching the eclipse and they were getting headaches or they were getting nauseous. Whoa, that's I crazy. I guess that does make sense. It's the moon is coming between. There has to be some gravitational thing, some barometric thing happening. Right. Not that I'm trying to uh, do too much science here. I'm not saying that there's not some magical going on, but there might be a scientific explanation. And I think magic and science can sometimes work together. I do too. All right, I'm glad we agree on that. Um, there were a lot of weird conspiracy theories floating around about the eclipse. So some people thought it was going to open a portal. Others, of course, there's prognosticators who think it's the end of the world. Uh, for the most part, though, I feel like most astrologists and or uh, what, what, what would be the proper term? Astrologists? Yeah. Astronomers? What? Uh, what would be the proper term of people who deal in the, in the, uh, uh, the mystical, magical arts? Just spiritual people, I would say. All right. Just spiritual folks then. Uh, I would say the most popular thing was just that, you know, the eclipse usually represents um, new beginnings. It's going to, and Mercury is in retrograde. I know that that's a thing right now, correct? Yes. All right. What do you, what do you think it means? I feel like you, you, you're better educated in this than me. Explain what you think uh, the most common um explanation for the eclipse and what it might bring in people's lives i think that what you're going to find is that meaning is going to eclipse other meaning so things going on in your life something has come up and eclipsed a part of your life and then now that the eclipse is over things are going to become more clear that's what i look at it as and mercury in retrograde is sometimes referred to as a negative thing, but as I've talked to my astrologist, it is not always negative. That just kind of means it's a little bit of a oasis for your chart and how you are flying through the universe. Yeah. What if I drive a Mitsubishi Eclipse? Do I get anything extra for that? Yeah, you actually do. In fact, I used to want a Mitsubishi Eclipse so bad <laughs> in high school. Go. Those were such badass cars. They were. And I never got to have one. Um, but yeah, if you drive one, it's your time. It's your year. Do they still make those? I don't think so. They don't? No. I remember uh, my friend had a Mitsubishi Eclipse Shadow. Oh, man. A spider. Was that a thing? A spider, yeah. It was like the, spe I don't know what that means, but it was like the <laughs> special edition. Mitsubishi, what's, what, Zane, what's that mean? You're just, oh, it was a convertible. I just liked the back bumper of a Mitsubishi Eclipse. It was a really cute, compact little car, right? It's two door. Yeah. It, it was, was hot as hell, man. Every hot girl had an Eclipse. Yeah, I feel like it was a girl car that guys tried to make a guy car, and it didn't really go over. Kind of like the Tiburon. 
Yeah. I had a buddy that bought a Tiburon. I was like, you bought a chick car. He's like, no, it's Tiburon. It's cool. We're like, nah, yeah. dude, it's you. And I've only, you're the only dude I've seen driving a Tiburon. And good for him. You know, if, they, if he loved it, who cares? Um, speaking of your astrologist. Yeah. Can we say her name? Yeah, Linda Sherwin. Linda Sherwin. Shout out to Linda Sherwin. She's great. I actually went and got a reading from her mm -hmm. uh, on your recommendation. I enjoyed it. I thought Linda was great. Um, how did you feel about, we got readings pretty close together. Yeah, so my birthday is March 28th, and I go at least once a year, usually around my birthday, mm -hmm. to get either a palm reading or my astrology chart read, and it's really fun. So she works at Mystic Valley in Maplewood. Shout out to them. And I've been going to see Linda for many years. Uh, this year was a pretty great reading. I mean, I, you and I both had really deep readings about the next like year of our individual lives. Yes. And she goes through your chart, which if you are unaware of that, all of us are born on a day and at a time. So I was born on March 28th at 4.50 p.m. in Carbondale. And I that the stars were in a certain position at the moment I was born. And so your astrological chart is that moment you were born. And obviously the planets and we all evolve and move throughout time and space. And so your chart will change throughout your life because the stars and planets all move. And so it's good to get a reading, you know, every now and then to kind of see how you're aligning with yourself. Yes. And I'll be honest, I went in there cold. I went not as a skeptic, but I did go in like I'm not letting this lady get a cold reading on me i'm coming in i was born september 30th 5 33 p.m saturday night my mom says that was a sign that i was born on saturday night and that's why i'm a performer don't know if that's true or not but it sounds cool <laughs> and it that. will go in my memoir um i'll be honest linda fucking nailed some stuff dude linda turned me into at least a non-skeptic mm -hmm. um she nailed a lot of things uh, about my life uh, that I, I didn't tell her. She didn't know who I was. She didn't know that I was on the radio because afterwards I bought her a coffee and a lady and a girl uh, at the coffee stand recognized me and she's like, well, wait, who are you? Mm -hmm. Are you famous or something? Or uh, And then she said that uh, I bought her some clout at the shop, which made me feel special. And she's like, oh, everybody thinks I'm so cool now because yeah, I gave you a reading. I goes, Linda, I love you. And... Linda went the extra mile, guys. Go. What's the name of the place? It's where Mystic she, Valley in Myst Maplewood. Mystic Valley in Maplewood. Linda Sherwin. Shout out to her. Linda's great. Uh, she sat down with me. It's supposed to be a half hour reading. We sat there for an hour and 15 minutes because she was like, you're really fun to talk to. You're funny. And then like the other, someone canceled an appointment after me. And Linda was like, that's a sign. <laughs> That, that you need to sit here yeah i got stuff to tell you because she said my chart was wild and she told me a lot of stuff it wasn't all good i'm not gonna lie to you some of it she she tapped into some of some things uh from my past that i was like yeah that was a real shitty time linda you really got in there on well, that one you really scrubbed some barnacles off of my old cry spots there linda but overall i thought it was cool i think any, anyone if you're interested at all you should go get a reading and uh, uh linda's a great place to start but they have other go on their website and check it out they have other types of readings too we did what's the one we did called um that's just like a chart reading so right. and actually jessica in the chat says learn do you think being a skeptic makes it harder for readings to be accurate or to resonate with people like maybe the skeptic is blocking things hope that makes sense that's a good question in fact i love the way that you went into the astrology reading rafe because you weren't just like completely all in you weren't you kind of had a guard up and i think that makes it even better for the reading because you aren't Get, you aren't leading the witness, right? You're not telling Linda anything that she could just latch onto and just take and run. Right. And that's how I suggest everybody go in. Now, a chart reading is much different than a palm reading or a tarot reading. So there's all sorts of different readings you can get. An astrology chart reading is just about your individual time of birth and then where you are in your life with the alignment of planets. Right, which was cool, but they do all sorts of, they could read your energy, they could they do Reiki, 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 whatever. Mike, Mickey, Mikey, <laughs> Mickey, they're all the same name, really. It's true. And uh, yeah, it was a very, very cool place to go. I had a good time. I think anyone should do it. And, uh, you know, she said it was a good time because we were in between. To bring it back to the source subject here, uh, Linda told me it was a good time to come in because it was between a lunar eclipse, which happened mm -hmm. while I was out at sea. I watched it out at sea while I was doing the Tammy cruise. And a lunar eclipse, which, or excuse me, a solar eclipse, which happened on Monday. She's like, this is a good time to come in. Uh, and ironically, it was uh, Aries Libra. Mm -hmm. 
opposite houses, which is what we are. Yeah. Uh, you're an Aries. I'm a Libra. Right. We're sister signs. Yeah. Sister signs. That sounds like sister, a sister, sister. Coming this fall to Fox. Sister signs. Sister signs. Uh, but we, uh, it was cool. And I actually, I really enjoyed it. I did go in there with kind of a, a as a blank slate. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, do you think that if somebody goes in there with an ad, like a shitty attitude, like we're trying to get Riz to go. Oh yeah. Our boss who is mo most likely would go in with a shitty attitude. Yes. Do you think that going in with that kind of attitude, someone could be turned, or do you feel like that fucks the whole thing up? Well, Riz specifically, I think, is a contrarian, so he's going to go in and he's going to call bullshit, even if something does resonate with him and floors him. Uh, but I think if, but I think it would shake him on the inside. He won't ever admit it on the outside, but I think on the inside, if Linda or whomever he would go to tapped into something, that mm -hmm. yeah, it will freak you out because you it's the closest to God or to the universe as you're ever going to get is some other person talking about your soul and your stars and reading you things in a code almost that makes sense to only you. Because, you know, Linda doesn't know me personally. Right. Um, in fact, she doesn't remember me. I don't ever like tell her I'm on the radio and stuff. I never say that. I go in again once a year and she sometimes will be like, I think I've seen you before and she doesn't remember. So it's yeah. not like she's, and I always do this. And this is a pro tip for getting readings of any kind. Do not not make an appointment if you're a skeptic do not make an appointment do a walk-in because then they have to be on their feet they have to be like ready to go because a lot of people mm. will assume if you make an appointment oh they're going to look me up on facebook they're going to do some research then avoid all that just go in completely cold um and do it as a walk-in which a lot of times are available yeah and somebody dakota in the chat asked is she a medium as well i don't know if she is or not you might know more about that than me they have mediums there i don't think linda is a medium though yeah, I don't, she didn't present herself that way to me. Like she wasn't saying she saw like the aura of my grandma standing around me or anything like that. Uh, and Dakota, want to know what your stance is on that. I've gone to a medium before uh, just once and I'll tell the story as fast as I can. But, sure, take your time. So my dad died in 2006, just for reference. He died right, from Greg. cancer and I, I wasn't at my dad's side when he died. And it's one of the biggest regrets of my life. I was 21 when he died. And so um, this was maybe 2016, I think I went to a medium. And again, I was like, Rafe, I went in, I didn't, I covered up my tattoos. I have a, I have a pops tattoo. I took my wedding ring off. I took anything off that was going to showcase who I am to the person that was doing the reading. And the woman who did the reading said that I had a band of brothers following me around. And she said, one of them is your father. And I go, yes. And she goes, did he have brothers? And I said, no, but he, he did go to Vietnam. And that made sense to me, band of brothers. Mm -hmm. He was a veteran that was, and a lot of his Vietnam buddies had died. And so that made a lot of sense to me. And then she said, um, in August of last year, you wrote a message to your dad. He's been trying to get in touch with you since last August. And I thought that was interesting. And I kept that in my cap. And when I got home, I went to my journals and in August, I had one journal entry for the entire month of August. And it was all about my dad. And it was like, I was speaking to him. And so that was incredible. That like blew my mind in a way that shook me where I decided I'm not going to do this again. I got what I needed. Um, and another one of the parts that she said, uh, she was like, there's something about your dad that you regret. And he wants you to let go of that because everything mm -hmm. happened as it needed to. And I was like, holy shit. Like, there's no way that this woman would have known that my dad died the way he did, that I wasn't there, that I had that journal entry. Um, and it was it was spooky. It was really cool, though. And it gave me a lot of peace that I hadn't found yet in myself. And so for that reason, I do support it. I understand why people maybe don't want to do it because it maybe is a little too close to uh, the God complex or whatever, sure. like, you know, but I for me, it gave me a lot of peace. There you go. That's very cool. And also like some closures. Nice. I yeah. think any way you can get it. Uh, get it, you know, and it's like, uh, and good for you for like showing the restraint to be like, I got what I needed out of this. I'm not going to come back here monthly yeah, and try to like connect and connect and connect. Like you kind of got the cathartic moment that you needed and that was enough for you and like good for you for, uh, for showing, uh, 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 moderation. Yeah, for sure. What a mensch. Um, somebody else asked in the chat, uh, Mystic Valley's the name of the place. Uh, uh, let's see. Thoughts on hypnosis. A few friends quit smoking because of this, so they say. Thoughts on observations on this. Any experience with or know anyone that has done it? Are you a believer? I've done I've done hypnosis before. I knew it. 
And it's a weird story. So back in high school, Columbia High School, we had a hypnotist who came and hypnotized like our principal or whatever. And I decided to get that person's information. And I went to, I went to, they did hypnosis out of their home. And I, I don't remember if that person was male or female. I don't remember where the house was. I also, the only thing I remember is this person waking me up and saying we had to stop the hypnosis because I was upset and like crying. And that, and I, she was like, I, she, I say she, I was told to leave. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like 16, no 17 cry, years old. And so I don't know exactly what that was, but then years later, like at the, in 2020, when the pandemic started, yeah. I, I saw a hypnotist on Zoom who I did hypnosis for anxiety and it actually did help me. It was okay. a little weird over Zoom, um, yeah, but I did, weird. I did go into the, like the trance state if you're curious about that. It's really? really interesting, yeah. I'm interested in that. So can I ask a question? Because you've told me this story before, but mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever asked this follow-up. Did you, when you were hypnotized in high school, do you remember it? No, I just remember being awakened. I remember laying down, and it, this isn't, nothing nefarious happened, I don't believe, you know, I'm not saying like this person sure. was a pervert or anything. You lay down, because you're supposed to be relaxed. Right. And um, I just remember doing that, and then like two seconds later, snapping out of it, and I was, I, I had, I was crying. And so I don't know what happened. And again, I don't even remember who that person was. And it sounds really like crazy, but it's not something negative in my life. It's just something yes. that happened. But I would like you to tell the story in its entirety uh, because we had this conversation in the office and I was like, oh, that was a horrible fucking idea. I can't <laughs> believe you did that. So please give this real quickly, the details of how old you were and yeah. what you did to go get hypnotized for the first time. Right. So it was the person who came to our high school that would hypnotize, you know, it was, mm -hmm. this person was a normal hypnotist. I got their information cause I was in journalism. And so I found their card or whatever. And then I drove out to their house and I know that they lived on like a back road somewhere in Monroe County over in Illinois, or at least I think. And then I was 16 or 17, I could drive. Uh -huh. And so I, uh, <laughs> Went there and like no problem, you know, like no fear alone. at all. Alone, I was alone. Um, In I don't, the backwoods, back road. I didn't tell anybody where I was going. Told no one where your whereabouts. Yeah, I think I, you know, I think I paid or maybe not. And so. Oh, you paid. I yeah, I just remember being really interested in getting hypnotized and then it not going as I want, you know, as, as what it should have done. Like I was hoping that I would, you know, lose weight. I don't even know why the hell I was going to be honest. And maybe that was the problem in the first place that I was like, I didn't have a reason to be there. I was You're just a kid. To, yeah. You know, it was a woman though. I think it was a woman. Yeah. Oh I'm like 95% sure. Maybe some dude hypnotized. He's like, I am a woman. <laughs> when you tell this story in the future, baby girl, I am not a dude. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, we're all glad you're still here to tell that story because I was alarmed when you told I it know. to me the first time. But you know what? Sometimes you got to. Hey, I'm guilty. I've done stuff in hindsight and retrospect where I'm like, oh, I went on. a. I mean, we all know I went on a fan boat in New Orleans with a guy uh, named Ham Hawk in the middle. I didn't know the guy. He took me out in the middle of the swamp. I was drunk. Doesn't matter. Not pertinent to this story, even though New Orleans is a very witchy town. Hell we'll yeah. get into that another time. Um, let's go. I got a caller on. Okay. Let's pop on and see what's uh, going on. Uh, let's go to a segment I like to call talking to the callers. Sorry. I need a better uh, segment title, but let's see if I can do this without disconnecting. Well, okay. give me a sec here. And you are live on the number two show, or as I like to call it, number two psychic hotline. <laughs> You're live with Madam Learn and Rafe. What can I, what can we help you with and talk about today? Hi, Learn and Rafe. Holy Hi. cow. Hi. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Who are we talking to? Um, so, uh, my name is Marissa, team Riz member, front row. We're still live. It's great. Okay. Hi. All right. Marissa would have done <laughs> fine, but thank you. Anyway, sorry. I got to brag. We gotta, um, I know we're trying to, we got to go in I, cold here. I wanted to call because, um, number one, I did watch the eclipse, and um, I have always been a skeptic when it comes to, I guess, like, this eclipse is more than an eclipse type thing, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I did want to say I, um, I watched it with my nine-year-old beagle, 
Okay. Um, and she sat, she sat right next to me on the porch, and she had been having some health issues for about a year. And I don't want to, like, bring everybody down, oh, but no. she ended up passing away about an hour after the eclipse happened. Uh, really? I'm sorry. That sucks. Yeah. What was her name? Um, Taffy. Taffy. <laughs> oh, I am so yeah. sorry for your loss. And But what a... I, th- trust me, losing a pet is the freaking worst. But, I mean, what a beautiful way for her to go, like in a moment like that you know what i'm saying like that meant like the whole i don't know maybe something in her spirit was unlocked by that eclipse i believe that for little animal spirits yeah that's kind of what i wanted to to mention is it was definitely just the way that we were watching it together was really beautiful you know she Mm -hmm. she's very active and runs around a lot but the way that we were watching it she just was just sitting right next to me um very calm and i was just talking to her and um it was it was a very nice moment for both of us and i definitely think that something kind of like what you said learned unlocked in her at that at that moment and she just kind of knew that it was time for her to go and we did end up actually getting another dog a couple months ago um, for her to be a big sister so i think you know all of that plus the eclipse and that moment kind of just let her be able to let go mm. so I'm trying to turn a really, really sad moment into a really, really beautiful moment and know that she's not in pain anymore and yeah. all of that stuff. So Yeah, that's great. Was she in pain? Was know, she sick or anything? Was there any she precursor? She wasn't in pain all the time. She, yeah, long story short, she was born with epilepsy. Okay. And she did deal with seizures. She was on medication for it um, and a couple other things. She wasn't actively in pain, thank God, but... Um, Yeah, I just, I don't know. I felt like sharing that. And I also wanted to, you know, to say to anybody out there that is going through something or dealing with the loss, especially like this week, you know, where we have the eclipse and everyone's talking about conspiracy theories and all that stuff. It's really important to find beauty and things that are going wrong in your life, not to be preachy, but also I listen. (laughs) <laughs> hey, we're all I wrestling with to, the loss of OJ right now, so this is helpful. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but also, I just wanted to say I love you guys on the show, and I listen to, I've been listening to the show the whole 10 years, and you guys got me through this week um, just with your banter back and forth and the way, you know, you guys do the show. And oh, I, that's really I appreciate nice. having something to laugh at every morning, and I just wanted to call and say thank you for what you guys are doing, and... I appreciate you. You're the sweetest. Making me smile this week. It's Thank you, Marissa. <laughs> sorry you. about uh, sorry about your pup, and congrats on the new puppy. And I'm going to drop the call because we got another caller. Bye, Marissa. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Uh, R.I.P. Ta- Taffy. R.I.P. Taffy. On to bigger and better things. Flying behind as she flew right behind the moon and up into dog heaven, and mm, that's that's beautiful. Hopefully, she had little doggy glasses on so she didn't stare right at the sun i hope she didn't <laughs> she did she did. in my fantasy she had little bitty cute dog-sized solar eclipse glasses on and she watched the she watched it go and she goes i've seen all i need to see in this world mama i'm gonna fly to the moon she kissed the little puppy dog oh. that she was a big sister to and said i'm gonna fly to the moon in my fantasy she's got like motorcycle glasses but they're also solar eclipse glasses oh cool yeah all right cool i didn't know we could do that and in my fantasy she's got on a little dog-sized leather jacket with 25 zippers oh my god and each zipper has a different milk bone in it and it she does. got to take that into the valhalla with her because she believed in uh taffy believed in viking funerals <laughs> Taffy was put on a canoe and sent out into the middle of a pond, and then Marissa shot a flaming arrow and set Taffy on fire in her little leather jacket, still wearing her cool biker slash solar eclipse shades. And she went into dog Valhalla. That's cool as hell, man. I like your brain. Riding a steed. All right, let's take another call. I'm going to try. Here we go. You are live with number two show, Psychic Hotline. How can we... Who am I talking to, and how can we help you today? Oh, hi. Hi, hi. it's oh. Shelly. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Shelly. <laughs> I was dealing with my dogs when you were 
doing that. Well, um, count your blessings I just, after yeah. our last caller. <laughs> I know, I know. I didn't even want to tell you guys what I was doing. It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I don't even uh, have dogs. Man, we can hear them barking. I know, no, no. Um, right, right. It's my hamster. Um, that's right. No, I'm a I'm a September 30th baby as well. Oh, Libra, birthday in the house. baby. Yes, yeah, but way older than you. My birthday was a uh, Wednesday. So I, but I thought I thought you guys said this morning on the show that you were going to do readings. Oh yeah. And oh yeah. Did I, mis- did I misunderstand that? No. no. Do you want a reading? I do. I've never had one in my entire life. I've never been to any kind of spiritual person. Mm. Never. Okay. Well, and so, yeah, let's talk about this. So I will tell you that if you want a professional reading, I would go elsewhere, but I am going to give you a reading. So you're right. September 30th. What time were you born? 4.32 a.m. 4.32 a.m. So we're a Libra. We're early in the morning. I would say that the next, you know, between Mercury retrograde right now and and this next year of your life, um, you are going to have an abundance of blessings. But then one thing is going to happen that's going to shift everything and it's going to change your life for the better. But you're going to be afraid at first. So there's your reading. Whoa. Whoa. Shelly. Well, that could be anything. I know. I'm freaking out a little bit here, dude. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I know. Shelly, are you floating right now? Are you floating out of your seat, Shelly? I, I right? Yeah, you know, I'm a little freaked. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Excuse me, I'm choking. Shelly, I'll give I you a more specific reading. You're going to do some laundry in the next <laughs> week, and you're going to find a $20 bill from last spring that you forgot was oh, in yes. a lightweight jacket in the closet. <laughs> It's going to be an unexpected windfall. You're going to take this $20. You're going to buy a pack of cigarettes and a few lottery tickets. Those lottery tickets will not be winners, but they will give you a moment of excitement as you cross off the $3 crossword and get one letter away from the $1 million prize only to realize the true treasure was the fun and journey you were having all along. Bless you, Shelly. All right, bless you, Shelly. Have That's a great. good day. You too. Be well. <laughs> Get a real reading. Get a real reading. This is entertainment purposes only and trademark. Yes. All right. Bye. Shut it gone. Bye. Bye. Oh, we got all kinds of calls coming in now. Here we go. Let's see who we got here now. Hello, you're live with the number two show, Psychic Hotline. Okay, who am I talking to and what can we do for you today? My name is Chris, and I was wondering if I could do a... Reading from Learn as well. Okay, Chris, right. what's your birth date, bud? Today. When? It's today. Today. All right, so you're an Aries baby. What time were you born? 11.30 p.m. All right, so you're a night owl. All right, let's see, what do I feel? Let's see, it is the it is the 12th. April 12th. Um, Okay, well, it's Friday, so you're definitely going to have a good time this weekend because your birthday fell on a Friday. Do you have a girl in your life? Yes. All right. Is this a long-term thing? Yes. It'll Uh, be... Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Married for five years. I'm, I'm hearing married for five years in my, in my reading. Okay. Wow, you're good. It's going to be a long... It's gonna be a long year, you know? You guys have been doing some decision making and you've been thinking about doing some things, you know? Maybe there's a there's a home in your future. I'm seeing like a build, like a new build, like it's a it's a she shed or it's like a man cave or it's some sort of deck situation that you guys are like putting wow. off and not wanting to put money into. And you're thinking to yourself like, do I wanna do this? Do we wanna spend this money on this or do we wanna spend, keep the money? And I'm gonna hear to tell you, you gotta spend the money. You need to build it. Whatever you guys are wanting to build together, this is the year, splurge, build it. That's what I'm hearing. Whoa. Okay. Oh, Chris, I'm getting a sister reading. Yeah. Oh, I'm hearing a long time you've been asking for butt stuff. <laughs> And it is your birthday and your five-year anniversary, <laughs> and I'm seeing possible butt stuff in your future, my oh, man. Oh, no. Oh, congratulations, <laughs> man. She's finally going to put something in your butt, and I am proud of you and glad you're finally going to get what you've been advocating for in your relationship. And that, my friend, is a reading that you can take to the bank. Thanks for calling in the number two show Psychic Hotline. <laughs> I appreciate it. Happy birthday, You're gone. Happy birthday, buddy. 
All right, we got one more call in the queue. Let's go ahead and queue them up. I have a feeling I know exactly what they want, but we're going to see anyway. Hello, you're live with the number two show psychic hotline. One of our one of our certified Hello? mediums is standing by to help you solve all the problems in your life using the mystic powers of the universe. Who am I talking to and how can we help you today? Um, my name's Roger, and I would absolutely love a learn reading and then a sister reading from you. I had a feeling that was what you were calling for, yes, Roger, Roger. But Roger. I am, am a medium, so of course I knew. All right, Roger, what's your birth date? February 21st. February 21st. Are we a Pisces? Yes. Okay, what time were you born? Like 10.30 at night. I need the exact time. I think it was 10.34, maybe. 10.34 p.m. Okay, we're at Pisces. Roger, do we like being out in the water a lot? Um, not really. Okay. I, believe okay. she's, I think she's just thinking stuff. of Roger Waters. Who, I am. Uh, I'm actually just thinking about Pink Floyd because of the eclipse that we had on Monday. Indeed. Roger. Um, yes, I actually listen. I did. I, I listened to that because of your suggestion. Really? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so, all right. Yeah. Roger. Roger Waters. Here we go. This year, we've had some we've had some pretty cool things happen in the first four months of 2024. I'm feeling like there was like a career change or like a new person in your life. Mm. Am I warm? Is there anything there? Um, sure. Great. Okay. <laughs> Here's the deal. You need to get a new job, Roger, and you need to get a new woman. So that is cool. what I'm seeing for you. Whatever's been going on has been fine, but I see change and I see like do something that you're passionate about. It may not be a lot of money, but you're gonna love what you're doing. And there's a person coming to you in your future, so if the relationship you have right now is a dud, get rid of it, because there is a smoking hot fox just a couple of months down the road. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Roger, do you need a minute to process <laughs> that information, my friend? A, li a, a little bit. I do have a wife and a two-year-old daughter. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going to have to process what I'm going to do yeah, about that. Yeah, I was that, sensing uh, which of those you needed to get I rid love. of. <laughs> New job it is. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> let me see here, Roger. I'm having a tingle near my butthole region. And you know when you, everybody Ooh. has, you know that feeling when you feel like you got lightning striking you in the taint? Oh, yes. We all have it occasionally. I'm having yeah. that right now. I don't know what it is. We, no one can explain it. Even science doesn't know, Roger. But I'm having that right now, and I'm having, oh! Sensing. Oh. Okay, Roger, I have a sister reading for you. I think I'm ready. I, while I think Learn's reading was wildly accurate, obviously, um, it was actually the child that you need to get rid of. No. <laughs> uh, you know they're two years old. They I think it's time for them to spread their wings and fly. Oh, it's I think time it'd be to get a job. I think boarding school, uh, military school, maybe uh, maybe let them you know study abroad for uh, 2024. I mean, come on, let's be honest. The two-year-old's been freeloading on you and your wife long enough. It's 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 interrupting the romance. And uh, I think it's time for you to consider maybe giving that child to a friend or family member just for like a year. You can do take them back when they're three, let them get potty trained somewhere else. Give yourself a break. Yeah. It's a year of self-love, Roger, and self-discovery. Get over that fear of water, okay? Can't get over a fear of water with a two-year-old. Two-year-old's basically a weight around your neck that'll drag you to the bottom. <laughs> you don't want that, Roger. What you want is a little bit of freedom for you and the wife. Uh, rekindle the romance. Maybe get some butt stuff of your own. I don't know why that keeps coming through so clearly today. It's just a butt stuff. I guess Mercury's in retrograde and buttholes are open. That's fine. And that's fine, Raj. And I <laughs> listen to me. Take that to the bank. Everybody's taking this to the bank. Take that to the bank. Cash that I check. I will. All right, buddy. All Thanks right. for calling in, man. I will. Thank you. Thank I you. I have a lot to think about. Yeah. Uh, right. Yes, you do, Roger. <laughs> Thank you. Don't think too hard. The phone lines are blowing up right now. Dude. Wow. <laughs> Everybody wants their buttholes to be taken to the bank. All right. Let's see whose butthole we're going to read today. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time left. Probably won't get to everybody. But hello, you're live with the number two show, Psychic Online. How may we help you today? Is there something you'd like to discuss or are you just calling in for a reading? Hi, my name is Tyler. Um, Hello, Tyler, who is I, clearly not a robot of any kind. <laughs> I was making sure that I was actually on. Oh, you're on. How are you, buddy? 
Doing all right. No, the reason I called is just because um, about a year ago, me and my wife, we were just going through. It was just one thing after another after another, mm-hmm. and um, we started noticing that there was this owl in our backyard every night. Who, and it seemed like the owl came around kind of when things started going bad, and we looked it up and found out how like owls maybe are like a bad omen or yeah you know, harbingers stuff like that interesting harbingers of the dark and then, forces sure enough you know we both we both had you know car accidents and uh you know a couple other things i won't get into it but then owl went away and sure enough things started you know going back on the up and up interesting yeah that's it you know um just to say this too whenever i went to my medium reading uh, the woman said that when I sat up, because I had to like turn my phone off, and she said I, I saw like a flight of a murder of, of crows, like a group of crows that like flew up. And so I always think that crows are, I obviously love the movie The Crow, but also that was really cool. And so now when I see crows, I always think of it as a good omen. Um, but yeah, the owl thing is interesting. I see a lot of owls around my house, but they're always in groups. So was it singular owl or was it a group of owls or is it just owls in general? It seemed like it was just it was just one hanging out in this one tree in the backyard. And so that's a bad omen. You know, just mm. causing a ruckus. Hmm. And that that's that's what online said. And then okay. my wife looked, looked it up as well, and she told me that owls are actually uh, good luck. So who knows? Who knows? You need to sage your house. I'll take, I'll take the first. Yeah, I think you're yeah, sage. Probably. She, Learn's going to tell you to sage that. your house no matter what. <laughs> so I would say take some yeah. sage. Uh, to your home and uh, that is an interesting thing you know how i feel about birds my men i got a very tumultuous relationship with birds some birds i like i love the idea of birds uh i like that the owl was outside of your home that's a cool thing and not on the inside but i could see a a bird of the night being a harbinger of uh perhaps bad luck a messenger of sorts owls have always been represented in greek mythology uh even roman mythology as as messengers so it could be good or bad, hmm. and uh, y- you never know, man. At least, uh, at least they left, and hopefully, you don't have any more car accidents. That's wild. Do you want a quick reading from Madam yeah. Learn before we let you go? I'd love that. Okay. All right. Let's when, give him a let's give him a quick reading. Quick Madam reading. Learn. Uh, what is your birth date? Uh, July thirteenth. July thirteenth. And what time were you born? Overnight. I'm not exactly sure what time. Oh, this is going to be hard. This is, this reading's going to be off. Overnight. This guy is a FedEx baby. Yeah, he was overnight delivered. Um, okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Obviously, you're very in tune with the omens that you see. Um, I think things are on the up and up for you and your wife. Um, but I would, I would honestly, I would get a lavender plant and I would, I would put a pot of lavender outside of your front door. And I would sage your house and I would, you know, keep looking for things that are meaningful like you did. Uh, I think that's really cool that you were in tune with that, but I don't see any more bad omens coming your way. In fact, I see things that are really uh, spectacular that are gonna be coming down the line for 2024. So whatever you've been worried about, I think that's gonna be less and less as we get through this Mercury uh, retrograde. Wow. Thank you. Tyler, I think you know what I'm about to say. Take that to the bank, my friend. Take that to the mystical yeah. bank and cash that check. The only thing, I, the only add-on I would have for that is I think that owl might be trying to fuck your wife. Yeah. Keep one eye on that owl. Keep one eye on that owl. <laughs> All right. Keep an eye I'll on the owl. Next time I see it. Right. Well, don't shoot. No, don't it. That's shoot illegal. It. That is very illegal. We, we are not advocating for you to yeah, shoot an owl. Shoot the owl. I just would not invite the owl in for dinner. Right. Okay. Make sure that the owl's not stopping by when you leave for work. Maybe check the nest cam. No pun. In, no pun intended. No pun, Nintendo. All right. 10-4. 10-4. Good buddy. All right, I'm going to take one more. we got two more calls in the queue. I don't know if we're going to have time to get to both, but hello, you are with the number two show, Psychic Hotline. How may we assist you today? Good morning. Good morning. Who am I talking well, to? Well, this is Debbie. You got Debbie. it right, Debbie. We already knew that. Hi, you Debbie. Did. How are okay. you? Um, I just wanted to mention that I'm going to see a medium and I was listening to your previous I just I'm kind of skeptical I'm, I'm 
I just wondered what I just need to say it out loud to somebody that I'm going to do that. Okay. Because okay. I can't tell anybody because everybody is like, why would you go do that? Are you surrounded you know? by skeptics? And, uh, I am. I am. Yeah, people can be really judgmental and because I, a lot of people think you're tapping into something that is dangerous, possibly. And I, hey, maybe it is. We don't know. Um, but well, I, I think well, it's, yeah. why are you going to see the medium, if you don't mind me asking? Well, I lost my son about two years ago, and I just don't feel any connection with him. Mm. And it's really hard because we were very, very close. Hello. And I'm hoping that she gives me some kind of closure on, you know, what happened, what he's, you know, I don't know what I'm expecting, but my husband says that I, he's afraid I'm going to see hear bad things and it's going to upset me, but no worse than I'm already upset. Are you on a landline? Thank you. No, no, I'm on a cell. Oh, do we have two calls open? I don't know. I keep, I, I started hearing a male voice and it. Spook me. I do uh, too. Oh, you do? Oh, we might have another, we might have had the other guy on. Uh, go ahead, Larry. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, if you heard my previous story about my losing my dad and needing closure similarly to yeah. you, you I, 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 would, um, I would go in and I would just have an open heart with what you're going to hear. And again, they, the person may ask you questions, as it sounds like you're skeptical, I would, I would be as limited as possible. Um, and, and also, right. if, if you don't hear something that gives you uh, closure or makes you feel good, still think about what is being said to you. Because I, I feel like you're going in with a lot of expectation and there may be a message mm -hmm. inside of what you're going to hear that will make more sense coming down in the next couple of days or a month or whatever, where you, you know, I, I don't know what that would be, but really if the person lets you record it on your phone, I suggest doing that uh, through your audio recording oh. app or, or like my medium, she wrote everything down for me, like mm. key points. And I got to take that home I mean, and I, and I refer to that every now and then. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm just, uh, I don't want to give too much information and then sure. get this general kind of, you know, reading. Yeah. I want something specific and close to my heart, and that's what I'm expecting. But we may have to have another number two show so I can discuss what transpired well, at this meeting. Send me an email and let me know how it goes. I really am interested. Um, I'm sorry for your loss, first of all. That sucks. Yeah. That's never losing a, a Losing a child is never something any parent should have to go through, and I, and I, I do have empathy and love. Uh, for you in that regard. Well, I will I, uh, go ahead. Well, I just want to say I appreciate you guys so much because listening to the Riz show every morning got me through some really, really dark times and put a smile on oh. my face, and it still does every day. Great. So that's God great. bless you. Well, that's great to bless hear. You. And I will say this, and this is something that I keep close to. This is something that's probably happening for me in real time um, this year. Um, I have always had kind of closeted private beliefs that uh, that you know I would that the universe is, is karma and the universe is real. I'm not a super religious person. I would say I'm agnostic. I don't think that I know what happens when you die or anything like that. Um, I'm trying. I'm pretty open to things, but I've always kept it very private that I believe um, you put good energy out, you get good energy back. You ask the universe for answers and they will appear to you in forms of omens. Pay attention to the omens. There's a lot of books that I read and I, and I recommend to friends that, uh, when they're going through hard times, you know, and, and obviously I went through a hard time with my own sobriety a long time ago. And I kind of cultivated my own belief system, uh, based on that, but I always kept it very private because I had skeptics in my life or I didn't want to, I didn't want to hear those types of, um, criticisms from people about like why are you doing that that's silly that's goofy blah 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 everything's goofy mm -hmm. okay christianity's goofy sure. everything's goofy sure that's a whole right. thing so it's like mm -hmm. go in there with an open heart and use your brain and your heart together um i don't don't you know obviously don't get taken advantage of and i don't think anyone's looking to do that don't go in there thinking that you're going to get don't go in there expecting closure but don't go in there um don't go in there with a cynical mind that won't allow closure to happen if it presents itself, yeah, if that makes point. sense to you. Yeah. Uh, but okay. I, I think it's a cool thing that you're doing. Send me an email for an update, and if yeah. you don't, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> we want to hear about okay. it. And we're not going to give okay, you a reading because you're going to get a real one. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, and I need you back at the Wildly Rave. 
I'm coming to, I'm actually talking to Al right now about doing a show there this year. So I'll see you at the Wildy Theater and bring about 300 people with you because that's how many I need you to bring. <laughs> see, I'm right. I will. <laughs> All right. I'm going to drop you. It was good talking to you. Okay. Bye. Keep Bye. me updated. Bye. Bye. All right. We're going to do one more quick call and then we're going to wrap up the show. And I think I actually left the line open earlier. <laughs> I was like, dude, her son is on the line. Oh my God. This is crazy. Yeah. Turns out, no, I just left something open and that's on me. I am a sham. Let's try one more call. You're live. The final caller for the debut of the number two show, Psychic Hotline. Clearly, you just took a big bong rip, whoever you are. So tell us, how high are you, and what do you want to know? I am pretty high, and yes, you are right. I am busted. That was a big chonger. <laughs> That's awesome. But what, I, what I'd like to know, Finally, my what I'd like to know is the future. Could the West Frankfurt witch tell me what the future holds for me? Yes, when's your birthday? 7-7-65, July 7th. July 7th, 6th. And what time were you born? Uh, around 1030 in the night, I believe. <sighs> this is a night man on the prowl. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. You're taking bong rips at uh, 1146 a.m. on a Friday. So we are in between jobs. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is a Lion's uh, Choice uh, Deluxe in your future. I can tell you that. And there's also a crate of Amazing. Dixie Cream Donuts coming your way. I can guarantee you through the drive through. Um, no, here, here's the deal. What did you say? Go. I said, not anymore. I'm recently diabetic. So, but, you know, yeah. Oh, well. that's how you get there is bacon donuts. Mm, okay. Man, they're damn good, too. Um, OK, let's see. We've had we've had a pretty crazy four months into 2024. Mm. We're maybe yep. focusing mm -hmm. on the wrong things. I feel like I'm getting a feeling that you have been mm -hmm. trying to cover something up, that we've been using distractions <laughs> and we're not necessarily mm -hmm you know, taking things serious, the things that we need to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I see it turning around for you, though. I see you uh, making some big choices here in the next couple of months, and you're finally going to get your shit together. So congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Rafe? Well, I'll tell you this, pal. I'm having a sister. I know you didn't ask for a prognostication from the warlock, Rafe Williams, oh. but you're about to get one anyway. I see there's a battle right, in your future. Cool. Oh, You're going to have a fist Ooh. fight with an entire oh. box of Entenmann's Crumb Top Donuts. <laughs> it's it's going to be the fight of your life. It's a, a box of Entenmann's Crumb Top Donuts will present oh. itself to you, and you are going to have to physically fight those donuts and bash them into submission. That way you can keep all of your toes, fingers, feet, and ankles because diabetes is uh, something that is, it's, it's, you, you got to huh. do it, man. And I, you're going to do it, but it's, there's going to be a struggle. You got to right. slay the dragon of Entenmann's Crumb Top Donuts, and I believe in you, brother. <laughs> Straight up. Thank you. Straight Thank up. You're welcome. All right, buddy. You have a great day. Thanks for calling the number two psychic hotline. That'll be our final caller for today. And real quick, we're going to move into another segment called message boards. I got a couple messages here learned. We're going to do these real quick and then okay. we'll wrap up. Does that sound good to you? It does. Okay. Because I do ask people to call in and leave messages and go through the point app. And I like to reward the people that actually do what the fuck I ask them to do. So I'm going to read their <laughs> messages as the final, the headliner of the show, if you will. First message from Kristen Pierce. I once attended Lemp Mansion Halloween party. They had a scavenger hunt and I won second place prize. Woo, -woo an authentic Lemp Ouija board. Began about five years ago, and I've kept it in our holiday storage and break it out every Halloween. My husband is very superstitious of it. Nothing's ever happened supernatural this whole time. What are your thoughts on Ouija boards? Should I get it out of the house if it makes him feel uncomfortable? Yeah. I mean, my husband's the same. I went to, I, I did a Ouija board um, event at the Fox, which is very haunted. And I had a really weird feeling. I felt like I had a ghost or a spirit that latched themselves to me after that. And I'd never had oh. that before. And it was because I was in kind of a haunted place and the Ouija board that this psychic and other people were administering uh, with us was for a radio show. 
I felt like there was an energy that came through the board and, and attached itself to me. And it was really strange. And so I understand um, maybe your husband's superstition with it out of respect, because you do have to coexist, maybe find a way to um, store it or maybe find a person that would appreciate having it a little bit more. But I understand that. And I'm not against Ouija boards by any mean. I just want you to be careful because obviously things like that can unlock unlock spirits to uh, to you. Just like um, Lorraine Warren and Ed Warren, the people that are in like, if you watch the mm -hmm. Conjuring movies, those are real demonologists in the 60s and 70s. Yes. And they, they're both dead now, but they have a museum of uh, spirited items that I think is in Massachusetts. And they would go to these haunted places and acquire like the Annabelle doll is based on a real life doll, like a Raggedy Ann doll that is in a glass case. And you're not allowed to touch it because of the the latching on of spirits. And so I, I do believe that very much. And so take that for what it's worth. There you go. That's her opinion on Ouija boards. I'll give you a quick one of mine. I went to a, <clears throat> here's what I'll say. They're made by Parker Brothers sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to a haunted house in uh, Nebraska and there were like 800 Ouija boards on the wall that were all supposedly haunted. It seems like unless someone is standing at the assembly line at the Parker Brothers uh, toy factory cursing all these Ouija boards most of the time I think you're safe however mm -hmm. you did say that this was a Lemp Mansion specific Ouija board and I will say I had friends who did dinner theater at the Lemp Mansion he quit because he said uh, the place was definitely haunted it was haunted by children my friend Kate Cole who got married on my birthday also had her wedding reception there they said some spooky stuff was happening in the Lemp Mansion so if this Ouija board came from a haunted place, my friend quit because he said that they did a quick change, costume change, because they played multiple characters in a show. Mm -hmm. He sat a fake candle on the bottom of a stairwell that led to nowhere. When he took his gown off, put his new costume on, the candle was sitting at the top. No one came <laughs> back there. He was by himself, freaked him out. He finished the show. He quit right after the show. Yeah. So take that for what it's worth. This did come from a very haunted place. Could lean in. You could lean in and see if some cool Beetlejuice stuff happens in your house but I don't think your husband's gonna like that, so maybe right. get rid of that one. Last message, good morning, Rafe and Learn. I was listening to the number two show podcast about conspiracy theories recently, and surprised no one mentioned the Mandela effect, which I did mention it, so you clearly didn't watch it. <laughs> there is a long list of things people remember that apparently didn't happen. The one I remember that sends me down a rabbit hole looking into it was a 90s movie called Shazam with Sinbad as the genie in it. It was a terrible movie. Yeah. I was wondering if either of you remember Anything on the long list of things that didn't happen? Love listening to y'all every morning. Is there anything that, because <clears throat> I think the big conspiracy theory around that is that Shaquille O'Neal was actually Shazam. Yeah, I remember that. I remember Shaquille O'Neal as Shazam. Mm. And I also remember the Berenstein Bears. Yeah. The books. That is a popular Mandela. Berenstein Bears. The Berenstein Bears. Bears. Yeah, I remember it being different. And I also remember when the color chartreuse was green or purple. Like, now it's not that. Whatever chartreuse mm. used to be before the glitch, now it's a different color. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, there's some things about the Mandela effect that really messed me up. <laughs> and I'm not one of these conspiracy theorists where I feel like we're in a matrix, but those specific Mandela effect examples really messed me up. Yeah, I think there's been several samples in my life where uh, I remember stuff differently, but uh, it's mostly small things. Like I remember uh, Bernstein Bears is great. I remember, uh, uh, I think the Flintstones or the Flintstones, there's like little tiny things that are like etched into my memory but i don't have anything huge uh other than that but the mandela effect is an interesting thing and the, the i believe the prevailing theory on that is multi things are left over from um the multiverse yeah. like we live in different and sometimes things bleed through and they're different than when we remember them as children other people say it is uh that we're it's the simulation and it's places where we respond and things changed where we possibly died and respawned and started our life almost like uh, in the middle of a video game. I Let's don't know. Let's go with that. Let's go with that, because that music means it's time for the wrap-up. Now, I really appreciate everybody calling in to the number two show, Psychic Hotline Network. Today, I believe everyone got a true and authentic medium reading from Madam Learn and Warlock Rafe. And uh, you can obviously not sue us because it's for entertainment purposes only that's true uh but we had a lot of fun today talking about the eclipse talking about things all things wiccan good luck to everyone who called in who is gonna go 
um, get a medium reading and, and thanks to everybody for sharing your stories. We really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun, Lauren. I hope you had a good time I today. I did. I love hanging out with you on, in the toilet. Yeah, me too. I actually had a lot of fun today. You're a wonderful co-host and a wonderful, wonderful medium. So until next time, this is Rafe Williams, host of the number two show, signing off. Don't forget to wipe. Always call in. Remember, you can anytime, day or night, call 818-532-1420 and leave me a message and I will address it live on the air on the number two show. Until next week, goodbye. Bye. Thanks for watching.